Mike's working on a new upgrade for the bus. It's more of a repair, really. Of sorts. Well, we think this is the problem. We don't even really know if this is going to solve the issue. True, very true. Mike's hoping that replacing this part will resolve the issue of how long it takes our air pressure to build up when we first start the engine. Yes. So basically, this little piece I'm taking off right now, its purpose is to regulate the pressure that the onboard compressor uh, creates for the brakes and things like that. So if this thing gets water in it, like if you're not drink, like purging your tanks at the end of a drive, like you get to your place and just go out there and pssst, or before you go, go out there, you know, start your engine, let your pressure build up and you have these little cables that will drain your tanks or just purge them and it blows water out is what it does though these things have built-in air dryers in them um, getting the water out prevents this thing from going bad so when we went up to Colorado to visit and we stayed at a Bass Pro Shops and the next morning we got up and started the bus because it was time to go and the pressure wouldn't build up and I was freaking out and we just sat in the parking lot just idling forever and then all of a sudden it just was sitting there at 25 and it just goes Doo! and we had pressure and we were good and so this very possibly could be our problem right here that's the part this is the, the d2 regulator the d2 regulator our governor governor oh d2 the d2 governor that's right so we got that off there's probably a gasket right here that i can't see of course and it's probably just been on there since the beginning of time so there's supposed to be a gasket here it doesn't look like they actually put the gasket on it when they installed it last time oh really that's what i'm guessing so in here is the gasket that will go that over will this. go on the new one yeah so either fell off when I took it off and I just didn't see it fall, which is possible, or they just didn't have one on there and it made it really well. Anyway, what we need to do is plug all the same holes that we plugged on this one. So this one, this one, this one, this one, with these extra plugs. Okay. Nice of them to pre-Teflon these little things. Didn't you say this was like a $20 part? It is, it's very inexpensive. Okay, so even if it doesn't solve the problem, it's not like a big loss. No. But if it does solve the problem, it was a really inexpensive fix. Heck yeah. So what this actually controls, it, it, it mechanically controls the uh, air, air dryer and the purge. So for instance, what the purge is for specifically, is for uh, when you reach up 100, you know, 110 pounds or 125 pounds, depending on what it's set at, it goes psh, while you're driving. So it keeps, it mechanically keeps the air pressure at a specific amount, so you don't blow up your tanks or you, and you can still brake and all that stuff. That's that's its sole purpose in life. Hi, Mama Sita. What you doing, kitty girl? Hmm. You're prowling around. She has to lean on you. Lean on me. See that how that came out? No, I wasn't watching. So this just comes out like this, and it's a little like compression fitting, and it compresses this uh, and, and, tube right and here. And where was it? Right here. It was in that thing. Yeah. So we need to get another. We need to go to uh, somewhere and get the new one of these things here. That'll somehow slide over this tube here. The supervisor position has been filled. So he had to go into town and get these little bad boys. Turns out they're one-time usage. The new D2 regulator. Dun, 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 dun. There's the dirt yoga. She's 
she's doing it. Oh, Mama, do you love it so much? Oh, you're so happy. Think you got it? Yeah, that's it. Where's our cat? Right there. Come on, Mama. You gotta go test something. You're gonna run off if we test it. You'll hate the bus forever. Sorry. We've never started the bus with her outside the bus before, and we're not going to try it now. So well, we're watching the pressures, hoping for the bestest. We should have timed it before how long it used to take our buzzer to go off and how long it takes now to see if there's a difference. I'm telling you right now there's going to be a difference already. I can see it. It's already building pressure? Yep. Yeah, it's going to build straight up now. Where? Which dial? Right here. So it used to stop right below the 25 and just hold there and it would stay there for a long time. Like 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes. And now it's it's going to build up. Wait, where does the buzzer usually go off? 60. Oh, it's almost there. Right there. Oh my gosh. Dude. We used to wait like 15 or 20 minutes for the buzzer to go off. That was less than five. What was that like three minutes? Yeah, that just for the, it just as a normal build. <laughs> that was ridiculous how much of a difference. That's actually the reason that this is so important is if there was some kind of emergency, a fire or something like that, we would have had to wait 15 minutes. I literally could not take the parking brake off until this thing got up. Right. Now that we fixed this, and it, it now we can escape if something happens. So we can literally start the engine, rev and the engine, and within a matter of away. minutes, yeah, be driving. That's not the preferred method. You still want to warm up your engine and all that stuff. But in the case of emergency, obviously, you just want to bolt. Yeah, like you said, if there was a fire or something, and we like had to get out immediately. Yeah, like we literally, we'd start the engine. We'd sit here. If I just let it idle like this, 15 to 20 minutes yeah. minimum yeah. until that buzzer went off, which also was like, yeah. I can't believe how fast that was. That what was a significant Total difference fix. for a Total $20 fix. part. Total fix. Right? A $20 part? $20 part. Fixed everything. Well, that's pretty exciting, babe. Good work. That just made my day. We're going to have to tell Clay it was the right part. Yeah. So, Kerry's ex, he was a diesel mechanic. We're still friends with him. I mentioned this problem to him, and he's like, you know, there's this thing called the D2 Governor. And, uh, they're cheap, they're like 15 or 20 bucks. And uh, sometimes if they get wet, um, they'll, you know, if you don't purge your system like you're supposed to, then they'll get water in them and they have a history of going bad. And they control a lot of things uh, in the, uh, as far as purging air from your, your, your uh, air filter or the water. Oh, you have grease on the back of your arm back here too. Oh yeah. So, okay, so purging as far as for, pur for purging your air and for keeping your uh, just it's basically the uh, pressure management system for the whole bus gotcha okay and a lot of diesels have them uh, if you have air brakes you probably have a D2 governor oh here, here's one, a towel for you oh, I don't want to get a towel dirty oh. um, if I'm still dirty so that was a $20 fix that absolutely solved our problem right there. So that was just great. Yeah. <laughs> so, so stoked by that. Yeah. Huge difference. I know. It's just <sighs> nice to get all the systems of the bus up and functioning properly. Yeah. Stay tuned for oil change. Stay tuned for uh, new coolant now that our coolant's good. So we're, we're about, uh, yeah, we're, we're about 100% on a, on a tune-up on this thing. And uh, be ready for some. And then all trips. we need is a couple of new tires. Three. Three new tires. Three new tires. And, and then we'll be good. Yeah, we'll be caught up on all maintenance. Cool. Good yeah. work, Mahones. You betcha. You rock. Do I get a drink now? You get a drink of water. <laughs> Did you figure out the issue? Not yet. Oh man. So, um, explain what the problem is. The air pressure's not releasing? Yeah, what's happening is the, uh, it's supposed to build up to between 100 and 120 PSI, and then uh, it will drain. 
uh, some of the pressure off and drop down again. So what happens is, is the D2 regulator is the thing that actually sends that command out to the air dryer to release pressure. And ours isn't doing that. So now we gotta start the engine and bring it up to pressure and see if it doesn't dump air like it's supposed to. Buzzer off. Oh, yeah. well, One part good. Now for the next part. Still not releasing air yet. Seems like we fixed one problem and developed another one. We yep. got the air pressure to build. Now we just can't get it to release. So the update is we've been back to town and bought a second D2 governor because we think the first one was just completely faulty. It's the only thing, it's the only thing that we can figure out why it wouldn't be working. Even if it didn't blow the uh, air dryer in the front, it still should have um, not built up pressure to, to really high. This is the first one, the old one that was already on the bus that wasn't allowing it to build up pressure fast enough. Then we got a new one that made it, allowed it to build up pressure, but it never stopped building. Yeah, I got it built up pressure really fast, but then yeah, never released pressure and we didn't want something to explode. So we're now on D2 governor number three. Would that be a D3 governor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. So hopefully this one will build pressure and release pressure. Yeah. Hopefully third time's a charm. Yeah, I hope so. You're gonna be a professional D2 governor changer after this? Not only that, like I watched the video on exactly, like they had a cutaway diagram of exactly how these things work and stuff. So I've kind of got like a little bit of inside information as to why it works, not just that it, what it does. Gotcha. Well, that's cool. And I think it behooves you to know things like that. Because then you can understand, like, when it's not working, the possibilities of why it's not working. Mm -hmm. Which helped you to determine that you probably just needed a new part in this case, right? Yeah, I think this one just failed. Yeah, I think Seems the one we got like was bad, well, factory bad. Well, didn't you get it online somewhere? I did, and if, like, if I had to do it again online, I would have found a Bendix one. Bendix is the... Brand name. The brand name that everybody recommends you get, but unfortunately, we have to drive today. Yeah, we got to get out of this spot. We're in a five-day spot, and this is day six. <laughs> Pressure's coming up like it should, so that means the regulator is working on the low side. Okay. And it's loading, it's called. And then when it reaches its cutoff point, which is should be around between 105 and 135 PSI. It doesn't actually say it anywhere on it, it's supposedly calibrated for that, but I think it's just calibrated by spring tension and not by actual air pressure. And so, um, once it reaches that, it will unload. And what that means is the air pressure will bypass, will come out of a different orifice on the D2 regulator and causing it to, uh, no more air pressure build. The compressor on the engine is always spinning. There's always, the pistons are always going. It's not like your air compressor at home that turns off. This is constantly going. So the way they regulate pressure is when it reaches a certain pressure, they just allow it to bypass out of the D2 governor. When it gets down below a certain pressure, then it allows the, the uh, pressure to build again. So that's the only way, it's, very, it's all mechanical. Okay, part A, so far so good. Now we just gotta wait for part B. Yeah, it'll happen somewhere right in this range right here. Will we hear it when it releases the air pressure? Yeah, you will. It's that one when you're sitting next to a truck, it's idling, and it goes 
Yeah, it's all loud and it scares the crap out of you. Yeah. <laughs> and it could be as high as 135. Nothing is happening. It just did it. It worked. That's it. Okay, this part is working. So we're there. Okay, that was the problem. We had a faulty part. Now we got a good one. Yes. So at about 130 pounds, if this is accurate, or 135 pounds PSI, it then activated the cutoff. So then it, it won't go any higher than that. The D2 regulator opera, or governor operated. So it got up to 135. The spring inside was actu actuated. It vented air through the unload and that, that thing kicks off just yeah. like that. And then uh, and it wouldn't let any more air go through the regulator to the tanks. So now it's losing pressure again and it will continue to lose pressure until it reaches somewhere lower. I don't know what the cut kind of, probably around 100. I'm gonna go see if I can hear the sound it makes from outside. Oh yeah, that was it. It's totally working. It's totally working. We did it. I have one more errand I need to run today. It's more of a special event. You guys, my grandson is turning one. And guess what we got him for his birthday? A Fisher Price school bus! <laughs> what year is that one? <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? There is a story that goes with this because when I went to the store to buy the new Fisher Price school bus, I was very dismayed to see that they had changed the design completely. And it was um, much smaller than it used to be and very narrow so that I thought if a kid was trying to hold on to the top of it and crawl with it or run with it like my kids did, <laughs> the thing was gonna like tip over to the side and the kid was gonna crash and that like takes all the fun out of the whole toy. So I had to get online on eBay and type in Fisher Price School Bus circa 1998 and get the exact same school bus that my kids had when they were little. So Atreus is gonna be playing with the same school bus his daddy played with, even the same exact people and everything. Oh. That's awesome. I forgot to say, I typed it in on eBay and the first one that popped up is obviously mint in the box with the people like still under their shrink wrap and everything. So anyway, I was pretty thrilled to find exactly, like I said, the same one that his daddy played with when he was a little boy. It's Happy birthday, Treyas. Happy birthday, Treyas. We love you. Mwah. Whoops. I just have to get this wrapped so I can get it in the mail from Grandma and Grandpa. Mail time. Mail time. The mail's here. Come on. Bye, mail time. Mail time, everybody. Ooh, I love mail time. <laughs> the moment Mike has been waiting for. We have been waiting for a long time because this particular package came from England and it was sent out on January 30th and we received it on what day? April 10th. It took almost two and a half months to get here. Like we literally wrote it off as lost like yeah. a month ago. We were like, it's never going to make it. Sorry, the package got lost. Yeah, so it's finally here. And this is from our friend Kevin K, who is our longest fan. He's been in our, in our lives for a long time now. So real quick while he's opening that, we have an, a big apology and thank you to a couple of people who we opened your packages and recorded it and everything, and then somehow that footage got lost. We can't find it anywhere. And so we want to say I'm sorry and thank you to Kevin and Bet Eichenauer. Mike enjoyed the cigars. And also to Terry Kale, Betty Giles, and her son Adam. And they're building a bus too. It says our bus is coming along, but not 100% done yet, working on it. So that's pretty exciting. Thank you guys so much, and I'm sorry we lost oh, the footage. Man. Did you just, oh no, we got a wound. I poked myself to the bone. <laughs>
the paramedic bandaging his own wounds. <laughs> All right, now I need a, a wrapper. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Hold on. Probably gonna pull through. You're a mess. I can't take you anywhere. I think I hit an artery. I feel like I'm cleaning up my child. <laughs> Go away, old lady. <laughs> Going in. I think I opened it upside down. Oh, hey, this matches our other stuff that he sent us before. Wow. You know what? That is really cool. We actually need an oven mitt right now. One of mine got like a hole burnt all the way through it and it's been washed and like, yeah, I needed a new oven mitt. This was perfect. Thank you, Kevin. God save the queen. <laughs> <laughs> look, mama uh, kitty got treats. Mama Sita's going to be happy. Hey, look, he sent us a newspaper. Hey, that's kind of interesting. This will be cool to see this what's in there. This would be interesting to see yeah. what they talk about in another country. Right? Cool. Oh, dark chocolate. Is that the queen's chocolate? Yeah. Kevin knows what Carrie likes. <laughs> what do we got? What's this? Oh, custard. Instant custard. I like that this is like edible stuff that um, yeah, it's this not going to take up space in our bus. This is cool. This is some coffee. Oh my gosh. From England. Wow. Got some more English tea. All right. Dude, that, that, that little tin of tea that you sent us last time, the bomb. The best tea we've so ever good. had. We I like, hope this is like a refresh. We savored that tea. It wasn't our everyday tea. It was like our special yeah. occasion tea. <laughs> like it really, we're not kidding. That's great tea. Get Leave it to England, of course. Of course. They know what they're doing. What have we got here? Jaffa cakes. I don't even know what that is. Me either. They're but little, I want to find they got out. Little, it looks like a little chocolatey. I don't know. Ooh. Look what we have here. Oh, this, this is, is the only time we'll be able to say this on YouTube ever. Kevin K sent a spotted dick. <laughs> what? Two spotted dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I have never seen or heard of such a thing. That is hilarious. Sponge pudding. Sponge pudding. Pudding. I thought it was something made of animals. So Two spotted we're, dick. We're eating oh that. Gosh. That might be like lunch today. <laughs> I hope this finds you both doing well, and I hope you might find some of the context in contents interesting. The spotted dick and custard are very famous British after offers to eat after a Sunday dinner. I'm hoping you will give it a try. We are definitely going to give it a try. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you, the cat, enjoys the treats. Take she care will. both of you and stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you in your videos. Love to you both as always. Kevin XX. Please excuse the writing. Kevin, <laughs> this was just fine. And your little gift here was so appreciated. And you know what? It was so thoughtful of you to send things that are edible and that aren't going to like take up space unnecessarily in our bus. That is just awesome. Yeah, and the fact that it was like a taste of England, really, that yeah. is so cool. Yeah, like so you sent your us. like traditional food to us and it gives us an idea of what your day to day is. And I think that's yeah, and the what newspaper. A thoughtful, yeah, very thoughtful gift. Thank yeah, you so much. Super Kevin. cool. Awesome. Thanks again. We're always looking for your comment, Kevin. As usual, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, you gotta give it a thumbs up. It's over here somewhere. You gotta subscribe if you haven't already, cause, well, that's what you're supposed to do at YouTube. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Take care, you guys. <laughs> Bye. What a neat gift. I know, huh? <laughs>